has given us. We are excited. Uh, we are excited about the, what the Lord has called us to do. So we just uh, thank God that you have chosen to be with us on this evening, that we might share information about what we're trying to do and how we can uh, engage with you. Uh, and specifically, uh, as, as we meet tonight, uh, we want to extend an invitation to each of your congregations to engage with us on this journey uh, toward thriving churches. And we'll talk about uh, how we'll do that uh, through our learning communities, as well as other uh, information about the center. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for another day's journey and for the opportunity to gather, to share uh, about the, the ministry that you have given us at the Congregational Faith and Learning Center at Hood Theological Seminary, a ministry that designed to help churches, to help build strong churches, to help churches thrive, to help congregations and it, its lay leaders and its members of the congregation and its pastors to work together to eat, that we might help them to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So we're thankful, Lord, for our gathering time this evening. So we ask that you bless it uh, in your holy name, anoint each of us uh, in doing your work uh, this day and every day of our lives. And we pray a special blessing on each and every person attending and each and every congregation. Guide us this evening, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. All right. So I'm going to get us started, and I'm going to uh, first uh, just do a quick introduction to uh, the center, and then I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'll ask uh, Dr. Williams to introduce herself also as we as we proceed. So again, we are the Congregational Faith and Learning Center. Uh, we are the latest initiative at Hood Theological Seminary that is focused on developing resources to help churches and lay leaders to thrive. Uh, and we, we emphasize that point uh, because uh, our initiative focuses on uh, thriving congregations. So we have uh, lived through some very challenging times over these past uh, couple of years. And I know because of your interest in attending this evening, you are uh, listening to God's voice to understand what would he uh, have you to do as you lead your congregations, as you uh, serve in your local congregations uh, and help uh, to strengthen uh, the ministry there and to make a difference in the communities that you live in. So again, we're so thankful uh, for the opportunity to, to meet with each of you this evening. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm the director. Uh, I uh, come to uh, this role uh, as a pastor. Uh, I've served in the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church where uh, I was uh, ordained uh, about 35 years ago, and uh, through my ministry, I have not only served in the AME Zion Church, uh, primarily in the uh, Western North, uh, Western New York Conference of the AME Zion Church, uh, but I've also served in the United Methodist Church for the past 10 years, uh, serving in the Upper New York Conference in uh, upstate New York, as well as serving as pastor uh, at the Centenary United Methodist Church here in Clemens, North Carolina. I do reside in Clemens. Uh, my uh, doctor ministry from Ecumenical Theological Seminary in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, like many, I have been a bivocational pastor all my years. And my, my other uh, side was uh, engineering management. And I've learned a lot from a leadership standpoint. And I've always tried to uh, hear God speaking to me um, because he put me in that position to how I might learn uh, to use uh, that learning for uh, leadership development uh, and growth and development for the, the church. Uh, so I have been blessed to be able to write a couple of books, um, one focused on uh, um, pro managing projects in ministry, and the other is titled uh, the MBA Quick Books for Ministry, and it focuses on some of the skills that uh, a pastor might lead as a CEO of a congregation uh, that might be taught in a master business administration program. So um, that's, that's me. Uh, I'm uh, married, two kids and two grandkids. And uh, like I said, I 
reside in Clemens, North Carolina. Originally from Cleveland County, Shelby, and if any of you are uh, North Carolina natives, I will also say that I'm a graduate of North Carolina a t State University, so Aggie pride. Mm -hmm. Dr. W Dr. Williams? So I'll ask Dr. Williams if she will introduce herself. Muted and talking away. Okay, <laughs> can you guys hear me now? Great. Um, I'm Dr. Rona Williams, and I'm program coordinator at Think Learn Thrive. Um, I'm working with Dr. Howe to bring to life this center and the mission that God has given for us um, here at Hood Theological Seminary. I um, come to this work from the world of law. I am an attorney licensed in South Carolina. Um, I spent much of my professional year doing compliance work, supervision and financial, financial services. Um, so I've come to this work from that particular background. I'm a native of Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm a Carolina girl. Um, got my undergrad at Winthrop University and my law degree at the University of South Carolina. And I'm currently finishing up whew, my MDiv at Hood. Looking forward to hitting the stage next year, Paula. Um, yeah, I serve in my local church um, at uh, City of God Ministry in Concord, North Carolina, and also in Charleston. Get artifacts, um, uh, pictures, anything that we may have to display at the general conference. There we go. Okay. Um, yes. Just meet everyone. Thank you. Um, I, I also serve at my local church as executive pastor. I've come to that with um, uh, quite an extensive journey from serving in almost every, every, every area of ministry, except the worship team. They hadn't let me on the worship team yet, um, but that's probably one of the only things I haven't done in church. And so I'm so excited to walk this journey with all of you. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Yes. Um, for Dr. Howe, I didn't include an agenda, so I'll just go through what we're going to do tonight. We're going to okay. give you some more uh, background information about the center and what we do, um, what the vision of the center is. And then we're going to get more into our learning communities and exactly what that learning community is and um, what it looks like and how we'd like to help your churches. So that's where we're going to go. All right. Thank you. All right. So... I'll just get started, and both uh, Dr. Williams and I will uh, share our time in sharing information uh, about the center, um, but just a, a bit about us. So, uh, like I said earlier, our brand identity is faithlearnthrive.org. Uh, we do uh, invite you to take a look at our website because um, uh, we put a lot of information on, on there for uh, your able, ability to connect with us and to uh, see some of the things that are planned as well as get some various resources. Uh, so our focus is to provide interactive learning communities and additional learning and development opportunities for small to medium-sized churches who are ready to do ministry differently. So I'm going to stop right there and emphasize what that means. Um, small to medium-sized churches, uh, that's, that's you, know, you know, people ask, well, what, what's a small to medium-sized church? And it's basically churches under five uh, members. And the other piece is who are ready to do ministry differently. Uh, as, as you know, from you know, the challenges that we faced, uh, particularly in the past two and a half years, and even before that, the world that we're living in is uh, rapidly changing. And there is a, a, a real need to, uh, to engage with people on really many different levels. Uh, you know, we've done uh, virtual ministry. We've been in the building. You know, we have been uh, creative and doing ministry. And the lessons from, from that basically have taught us that as we go to the next phase and uh, the next phase of what God calls us to do, uh, we, we can't uh, just try to do what we used to do or, or go back to what was before COVID. You know, uh, so I, I think you as uh, being interested in joining, you have said uh, in maybe even communicated it uh, to your colleagues, uh, to your leaders in your local church. We need to figure out how to do uh, ministry differently so that we can 
thrive and do the ministry that God calls us to do. So uh, you'll see that as a, a key emphasis uh, throughout uh, everything that we share this evening. Uh, and you'll also see that uh, even though we focus on small to medium sized churches, we also have ministries uh, that uh, are suited for uh, any size uh, ministry that can help uh, to reimagine ministry and continue the, the work that God calls us to do. Here's a short promo video just to, to give you some uh, background information on our center. If um, Let me stop sharing and make sure I've shared properly um, if we want to do this. Good thing I did that because I didn't. Here we go. The Congregational Faith and Learning Center at Hood is the seminary's new Thriving Congregations Initiative. Rona, as I reflect on uh, our work at the Congregational Faith and Learning Center, one of the things that really stands out to me is that the world that the church is operating in has significantly changed. We created the center because our world is rapidly changing. And although our message remains the same, our methods must change. So we want to partner with congregations and help them build stronger churches. It's really critical for us to do the work of Faith Learn Thrive. You agree? Faith Learn Thrive helps churches clarify their identity, their vision, their mission, their strategy to become a transformative influence in their communities. That's who we are. When I think about thriving, a church needs to be not only rooted in the Word of God, but it needs to be focused and intentional on how it can do ministry in the day that we live in. So what we're trying to do at the Congregational Faith and Learning Center is engage local churches to help them with mission and vision and thinking about how they can connect with not only the members of the congregation, but how do they connect with the community? Partnering with our center ensures that your church gets exactly what your church needs, help. Every church needs help. So we're here to provide the workshops and classes and ministry labs, cohort groups. But also a benefit is learning how to be a learning organization, how to be a learning church. Our goal here? We help build stronger churches. All right, so we hope that video has uh, been able to help you uh, to get uh, a little bit more insight into uh, what we are focusing on here at the Congregation of Faith and Learning Center. P part of our team for uh, our planning activities and looking at uh, getting input for uh, the growth and development of the center uh, also depends on a, a council of advisors. So we have a, a diverse group of folks that uh, have uh, volunteered to be part of our advisory group. And you see some of them here, uh, um, both from a, a multitude of uh, congregational settings, uh, UMC, uh, CME, AME Zion, non-denominational, Presbyterian, uh, church laity, as well as pastors. So we are uh, quite thankful for uh, our advisors who uh, work with us uh, because I think by having the advisors and working together, we can do even more as we plan the work and execute the work of Faith, Learn, Thrive. As we mentioned in the video, um, we are rooted in the word of God. Uh, and Ephesians 4.12 uh, is our theme scripture. Uh, it focuses on to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. That's our foundation as we do this work. So our goal then is to provide training uh, and uh, faith engagement directed congregations to the community, uh, in the community, 
by being a place to educate, to empower, and to equip congregations to thrive, to thrive and do God's will. Uh, as we seek to reach others, as we seek to grow, as we seek to develop leaders, as we seek to impact our communities, as we seek to you know, develop the ministries that God calls us to do in our context for him. So our what? Um, we're really concentrating on providing hands-on learning experiences with definite outcomes in mind. Um, we wanna make sure that we're doing more than just inspiring congregational leaders, but we wanna equip you with um, practical steps, what to do next um, to implement these strategies within your church. And so part of our goal is not just to train just the pastors, because we know that pastors alone cannot create a thriving church. It takes a team of people. And so we want to help congregations empower their leaders to make decisions from a place of confidence. We want them to work collaboratively and learn how to leverage the resources they do have to make a difference in their community. Yeah. We've talked a lot about our why and all of the changes that are happening. Um, so we know that we have to be uh, we have to be places where vision is thriving right now. We have to be very clear in our focus as we communicate with our community and with um, our stakeholders and partners in the community. We need to have a clear sense of mission. And then what we actually need is not just this vision or this dream, but we need a step-by-step -step strategy in order to make the vision come to pass. And so that's the focus of our center. We really want to be able to bring in resources that will help ignite strategy within our churches so we can really become the transformative ministries God's called us to be in our communities. Dr. Howe? Yep. So here's some ways that we can help. Uh, as you see, uh, three key focus areas, uh, primarily be becoming the learning communities. Uh, secondly, coaching, and that integrates with the learning communities, and we also have uh, ministry labs. So let, let me spend more time uh, speaking about the learning community. So as we initiate this work for Faith, Learn, Thrive, what we are inviting you into to engage with us, we are inviting you to participate in our learning community. What's a learning community? So we start this effort in September, this coming September. And it's a nine or 10 month uh, cycle. And we're inviting uh, churches to select maybe five to seven uh, lay leaders, leaders in your congregation to participate in a learning community. So, you know, let's take church XYZ. They would identify five to seven uh, uh, folks from their church, key leaders, influential folks in their church uh, as leaders, uh, lay leaders. And we will have a learning community that's made up of initially, we start with five churches. So each learning community will have five to seven folks. Yep, five to, five to seven church and the five, five churches and each will have their uh, members that make up their learning team. So we then put everybody together as a learning community. So our, our launch for this pilot is June to uh, September through June. Again, five churches and every church will have a coach. That coach is integral in working with you as you take part in each of our monthly sessions. We begin with September and that's going to begin with a, uh, a retreat. And then every month after that, until we get to the end, which is in June, there will be uh, workshops and those workshops will be virtual and they will be on a Saturday. And I think we have in here with the dates that we have. Yes. So each, each month there will be learning, uh, there will be sharing uh, between churches. You'll be working on a particular topic for that, that time. And you have the, then the, the, the opportunity to go back and continue to work your congregation you've learned through these experiences. 
again, five churches and everyone will have a coach. That, why, you might ask, well, why do we have five churches and six coaches? Well, the pastors become an integral part of this process too. So we have a coach dedicated to working with the pastors also. And as Rona highlighted earlier, planned outcomes are critical. This is not just specifically to be able to come in and do a workshop, but we, we want you to progress through this process. And we're calling this a, a, a foundational uh, thrive, foundations of a thriving church. We want you to progress through the process. For example, uh, Outcomes are things like uh, if you don't, for example, a congregation might not have its mission statement or its values or its vision statement and how that rolls out into the congregation. We're going to focus on that. We're also going to focus on leadership development. We're going to focus on church administration tools. We're going to focus on, again, the foundations. And we'll, we'll show you uh, some slides here that, that talk about each of the topics we, we have. Yes, now some of you may be wondering, wow, five churches are gonna be chosen. What, um, and we've got more than five churches represented tonight, right? Yep. Um, we, we are aware of that. This is our first learning community and we wanted to take a very controlled group of churches. Um, we've limited it to five churches for this experience. However, we'll be doing the experience over and over again. Um, yep. And in those groups, we'll have availability for up to 10 churches to participate. So just, you know, take a deep breath and know that this is going to still be available to you guys um, at some point in time. Um, but we're kind of trying to create um, this pilot group of churches so we can learn from the experience and help grow this program um, over the next few years. Yes. So here's what the plan for our learning community looks like. Um, Dr. Hal talked about um, meeting monthly um, we will meet monthly between the months of uh, September and April. In May, there's a break and you'll see that. Um, and then in June, we're hosting an annual conference um, and we'd like to invite all of the churches that are participating in this particular learning community to join us at that annual conference. So we'll begin in September on September 10th and 11th with an opening retreat. We'll be hosting that on our campus in Salisbury. Um, and we're going to spend that day doing some level setting. We want to make sure you guys have all of the resources that you'll need. There'll be a prayer strategy for your churches so you can bring the entire church community into this process with you. Um, there's going to be explanation of coaching and you'll get to meet your, your assigned Coach. coaches at that event. We'll also have some resources available for you at that particular event, things that will help you as you go through this particular process, it'll be an opportunity to meet the other church leaders, um, to begin building relationships and community amongst yourselves. So that's a very important day. And then we'll also have some uh, training around how to work together as a team and how to deal with conflict. So there's some leadership development built into this day as well. Yeah, and absolutely. then over the next several months, we're going to- uh, Dr. Williams, let me just throw in one more thing. Uh, don't yes. forget that when we get together, uh, especially at a retreat, we're going to have some food too. Can't forget oh, about food, food when we get together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's always food. There's always food. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, then the next several months, we focus on one particular topic each month. And so you're going to see the topics that we're going to be addressing throughout this process. It's a learning module. So every month, um, your congregational teams will work on the outcomes for each topic. There'll be a, um, a, a subject matter expert who will come in and do the facilitated portion of this. Um, it's a two hour workshop on Saturday morning. Um, you'll also spend time with your coaches as you're working on your outcomes and your, your deliverables each month. Um, and then you'll have the online community. We'll be in a private Facebook group um, where you can ask questions from other participants or from our facilitators or from our staff here at Faith Learn Thrive as you walk through this process. So we're not throwing you in the deep end and walking away. We're going to stick with you and walk, through, walk with you through this entire process, okay? So some of the things we're going to address, um, I'll do this one and Dr. Howell, you can pick up for the remainder. Um, we're going to uh, address clarity. 
a lot of times we've had a mission statement. And if you've been part of a church for a long time, your church may have had the same uh, vision statement or mission statement for the last 10, 15 years, um, eight years. And you've never gone back to revisit what is God saying about our church right now? Who are we now? And that's a work that I think you continue to take and you really need to consider that over and over and over again. And the same thing goes for your vision. Like the church you were 20 years ago is not the church God's calling you to be now. So this is an opportunity to stop with intention, to, to discern, God, what are you calling our church to do? Um, who are we in our community? And so we're going to walk alongside you guys to do this work. And then we move into looking at goals. Uh, as, as you look at each of the previous three modules, they build upon each other from uh, looking at strategy and vision and uh, where God is leading. And then stopping to think about what are the goals that we need to set as we create a clear, smart goals for executing that vision. So we'll, we'll have that module will teach about creating goals, smart goals. Uh, as you, you know, work toward achieving them. And then that builds into strategy. So strategy is creating a clear plan of action to reach those goals. So it's one thing to say, okay, we got goals, but what about the, the, the clear plan, you know, the strategic plan for actually executing? So we will have training on uh, strategic planning. Administration is a, another key one that uh, is important. And that is creating the systems to reduce reliable outcomes. You know, systems, administration. So we're going to talk about things like uh, what, what are the membership systems? What are the, the uh, church management systems that your church might need for its particular context? Uh, we'll talk about how uh, some of the online tools uh, can be used to assure uh, what you're trying to do. You know, uh, websites and social media and the like. That's part of the administration component. Can't, can't overlook the importance of that. I think we've learned that through uh, even COVID. You know, how, how do we connect with everybody? How do we, how do we, how do we follow up with visitors? You know, how, how do we make sure that you know, when folks come that there's you know, direct communication uh, with them and have systems for actually uh, getting uh, results based on that? Mm -hmm. And then we move toward leadership development. Leadership development, uh, as uh, Dr. Williams mentioned earlier, you know, it, it's integrated in all of this, uh, but we do have a particular uh, module focused on leadership development at the laity and at the uh, pastoral uh, level. And it's focused on equipping and releasing uh, members, volunteers to lead. Uh, as we said at the outset, uh, the, the work of the church is all of God's people. It's not just the pastor. Uh, it's the laity. It's the leaders that are in laity. It's the, the total of the congregation. And that's kind of why we say at the beginning, we're focused on a thriving congregation, whereas there might be other initiatives that focus on thriving clergy. So there'll be a leadership training that day uh, for laity. And then there will be, uh, we'll bring in a subject matter expert uh, that will come in and provide a leadership um, module for the clergy to assist in equipping and releasing them to lead. Now, at the same time, we will be also working with you on, you know, taking all that you have learned uh, so far, especially from vision and leadership development on systems, et cetera, because all of that then starts to come together as a, a total package for energizing, mobilizing, and encouragement of the entire church going forward. So that's what we call our vision casting. So we'll be working with you to create an actual vision casting event at the church. Uh, you know, it, it'll be a total church event. And Dr. Williams and I will be actually uh, coming to your congregations to, to be part of that with you. So we will be working with you for creating the things necessary to create that event, to get, get everybody in the congregation encouraged and, and the, your community encouraged uh, to go along with you. And then we wrap up 
in June. And you please see that between April and June, uh, there is no May. So it's between the, the workshop there on vision casting uh, that you then actually go off and, and do those events uh, between middle of April through the uh, us gathering in June uh, at your various locations. And then we'll come together uh, with a, uh, a, a, a annual conference where we'll bring it all together. Uh, that is you go and make disciples to follow Jesus. That one's going to be in person. It will be a conference. It will be uh, your opportunity to share what your church has, uh, has done as you have you know, uh, ca uh, cast your vision, as you have planned your strategy. And everybody is able to learn from each other. It's also going to be an opportunity for us to come together in worship. There will be music. And I'll have to say again, there will be food. Uh, there will also be uh, displays. We'll have other vendors to come in. It, it will be a conference. You know, it, it will be not only you in attendance, but we'll be in, inviting other churches uh, and organizations to participate in that too. All right. And hopefully it'll be an opportunity for you all to see what the other churches have done. Yeah. Um, and how they brought their congregation um, along for this particular journey. And along the way, we're here to support your churches, right? So we know there's some churches who've had concerns about either having the volunteers or the finances to do some of this stuff. We're going to work with you guys to, to not shove a one, one approach to every church, but to really help you find customizable solutions for your church and provide the support that you'll need in order to accomplish all that. So don't feel overwhelmed. We're here and we're going to help you through all of it. Yep. And that's another key point why it's important to have that coach with you. And as we mentioned earlier, the, our coaches will be trained before we get started and the coaches will attend every uh, of the sessions with you. And then the coaches will also interact with you in between each session as you continue that work from each module. Absolutely. Um, we're going to head into Q&A for just a second, but before we do that, I wanted to highlight these free um, resources that are available on our site now. We did do a congregational survey report of 14 congregations in our area who responded, um, and there's some pretty neat insights there. You may want to take a look at that, um, or you may want to look up what is a thriving church. Our definition of a thriving church is adapted from Robert Schneezy who has a book on being a fruitful church. And so that will give you some insight into the five key areas that our center will focus on um, as our definition of thriving. And I think it's very insightful. So if you have some time or opportunity, take a look at that. It's also available on our website and you can grab that there. So we'll pause now. Um, and talk more about Q&A, and then we'll end with some of the other ways that you can connect with us. And um, yeah, how you can contact us. So are there any questions about the learning community? Any feedback about it? Any thoughts you'd like to share with the group? Wow, we must have been really thorough. <laughs> so let's just say this. Um, this is our first open house for this um, particular uh, program. We, um, we have already begun accepting applications. I would, I would encourage each of you to um, complete an application online. Tell us about your church, how we can help your church. Um, that's important. If you head over to our website, you can definitely get all of the information and you can see the entire application before you fill it out so you know what kind of information um, that we're looking to gather. Um, we do have the summer to recruit churches. And of course we're starting in September. So we wanna give the churches enough time to plan and prepare um, to meet us beginning in the month of September. So the earlier you submit it, the better for us so that we can make those decisions. Um, it is 100% free. Um, so Let me say that again. It is 100% free. Right. So you're going to be able to go through this whole process of learning with subject matter experts uh, as facilitators as with having a coach uh, through the whole process with uh, Dr. Williams and I uh, going beside you and, and helping through. 
um, the resources uh, for uh, the workshops, 100% free. Um, Nicole Coven here. Um, thanks hi for there. Hi, hi there. How you doing? I, Great. I, I see something on, on your shirt. It looks like uh, pink and green. Yes, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Oh, I see. Sir. Okay, so <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, this is very, very um exciting for me to just to hear about the program. So I just wanted to say that. Um, I I kind of want to say where where have you been? Um, <laughs> I wish that I would have had this like twenty years ago. Um. Mm -hmm when is the criteria for the churches there um, in the application, uh, the criteria of what, what are you looking for? Um, if you could just even give a brief synopsis of the criteria, what types of churches um, are you looking for to do the program? Yeah. Thank you. So I'm gonna answer the first part of that. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Williams and I work very well together in and I'm going to have her ask, answer part of it. I'm going to answer part of it. So when I first started uh, with, with my part of the presentation, I highlighted there was an important consideration for the congregation and the pastor kind of coming together and, and on the same page, you know, singing to the same music. This consensus is we need to, you know, hear God speaking to us and how God wants us to uh, do ministry going forward. And, and in so doing, that means you are uh, acceptance of change, realizing you, you are interested in learning new things. You are interested in, in being led by the Holy Spirit uh, for such a time as this. And you are, as the, there's a, the, a consensus with the congregation and the pastor that this is a journey that God is calling us to. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Howe, throwing it at me. Um, yes, willingness to change is number one on our list. We're looking for congregations that want to do things differently. If yep. there are a lot of roadblocks in you to um, a change mentality at your church, this may not be the, um, the most appropriate at this time. That doesn't mean there are other things that there isn't other things that we can help you guys with. But I think that willingness to change is really, really important. Um, I would also add to the willingness to change that there's enough leadership support in your church to change. Because this isn't something a pastor can do on, on their own and really energize the entire congregation around changes, uh, upgrades, upgrades. You know, you may be a church that's had a vision statement since you started, um, but it's been 15 years. So you may need to revise, revisit, um, reformat, change some of that stuff. So your leadership support is very important. Um, it's difficult to initiate change in your church when your key stay stakeholders aren't on board. Um, so we're gonna be looking at your level of leadership support um, or your governing leaders supportive, your preacher stewards, your trustees, your deacons, um, councils, whatever you have at your church, the you auxiliary yep. leaders, whoever they are, whoever yep. the people that are influential in your congregation, that you have enough support um, to make the changes you'll need to make. And then we want to see your commitment to impacting your community. That's really important, right? Um, we, because we're doing all of this. We're doing all of this so that we can impact our community. We want to be clear so when we reach out to them, they know exactly who our church is, exactly what God's called us to do. We know exactly how we're going to reach them. We've got a good framework for thriving there. And then we'll be looking at um, some of the expectations you have of what you need in a program. This is our first run at this particular um, community, right? So we're learning as you're learning, and we want to hear what your church needs, what do you need to gain from this experience so that we can respond to what your needs are. We do have higher priority for smaller churches um, and medium-sized churches. So your church size will impact. It doesn't mean that we're not gonna help a large church. Large churches need just as much help as small churches do. 
because the organization changes as it grows, right? And so the organizational needs change and their, their uh, approach to meeting those needs also have to change. Um, and so we'll just take a, a look at your congregation and see how can we help you. Um, and if you're a good fit for this particular program, um, we'll notify you of that after we received your application. And again, um, I don't want anyone to say, well, you're only taking five churches, I'm not gonna apply because the other churches may be considered for the next round um, of 10 churches. So if it's something you feel your church can really benefit from, I would encourage you to apply this time. Yep. So I think what, what Dr. Williams has highlighted, you know, if you put all that together, it key is going to be um, the ability to have strong collaboration within the congregation, strong collaboration between laity leaders as well as the pastoral leaders. And that, at, at, at the same time, let me also emphasize this because uh, we didn't say it directly. Uh, this is intended for churches of all, uh, it's not just for Methodists, it's, it's for non-denominational, so it's ecumenical. So Baptist, uh, Church of God in Christ, CME, AME, Presbyterian, I probably can't, can't uh, uh, United Holy Church of America, there's so many of them, everybody's welcome. So don't don't feel that this is just for uh, uh, restricted to a, a, a one or two different types of churches. What other questions? Hi, oh, I see a question in the chat. I'm okay. sorry, um, Dr. McNear, you go ahead and then I'll address the question in the chat. Okay. Hi, I am uh, Dr. Aquanita McNair, and I graduated from Hood in 2010 with my MDiv. I'm so glad to be here in this community tonight. I do have one quick question. Um, I am a CME pastor and we will not have our annual conference until July, it starts July 24th. Um, and so at that time, I, and I have already, been given the information that during that annual conference, I will be moved to a different church. However, I do not know where the church will be located. Currently, my church is located in South Carolina, which is about three hours outside of North Carolina. So if I put my application in, after our annual conference, once I see where I am going, will that be deemed too late for assessment? So are you saying you would be applying for the church that you are currently serving or the church that you would be serving after your annual conference? The church after my annual conference, because I'm thinking um, between now and um july that will not give the current church where i am enough of time to receive through your timeline the resources needed mm -hmm. that's that's an interesting question so or could i do both could i um, you, you, you do definitely both can do both you definitely can do both that's that's an uh, that, that's pretty that's pretty straightforward okay I will highlight the importance of, and that's, uh, I think we've heard that question before from the perspective of uh, some Methodist bodies, especially if there is an itinerant system where, um, where the pastor could be moved. Um, at the same time, I think what we want to emphasize is um, there is a critical point of laity involvement. So if, if you're at this, if your current church and your current church feels that, you know, this is the time to engage in this journey, then I would definitely encourage them to continue to do that because, you know, building a thriving church that has you know, strong involvement of lay leaders, you know, the, uh, I know in, in, in some Methodists, it's the lay council, uh, um, but, but having that strong lay leadership is important. And that should not stop uh, in the midst of, uh, say, a pastoral change. 
you know, for example, I, I remember serving in a church uh, years ago and the pastor um, was, was getting up in age, uh, but he had a strong laity that helped make the, the church run but without, and it was in a Methodist system. It, it, that church ran like clockwork. You know, the pastor did, you know, as much as he could, but he knew he had strong leaders in the community, in the church, and they continued to do the work. So uh, I would not let that stop, you know, the work that God calls the congregation to in building a thriving church. That just builds a strong foundation going forward mm -hmm. for pastor and the whole congregation. Okay, thank you for that answer. Okay. Dr. Howell, this is uh, Dr. Shipman, and I appreciate you and Dr. Williams and the uh, wonderful presentation tonight. And um, I do believe that uh, this initiative is not only overdue, but is on time due to the conditions in which we are uh, finding ourselves in a new context of um, doing ministry. And I'm grateful for you all doing this. Um, I have two questions. Um, will any of the uh, coaching and any of the um, directions that you will be dealing with the congregations deal with uh, mental health and mental wellness due to the fact of uh, uh, the intense trauma that all of us have gone through over the last two and a half years of this pandemic? Yeah, that, that, that's a very, very good question, uh, Dr. Chipman. Uh, as part of this initiative, uh, we, we do have uh, uh, health uh, care, uh, uh, leadership care as part of it. Uh, and I think that uh, would fit under uh, leadership development. Um, but especially from the perspective of uh, when we get into the leadership module and, and how we understand what the context is in that particular uh, congregation. Now, that's not to say that there is a particular module that says mental health, um, but we are aware that, that 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 has an implication on how we work together as, as a team. That has uh, an implication of how you build collaboration too. So uh, yes. I guess we would look at it from that perspective and, and plan around it in that way. And I would encourage anyone that's on here who's not a part of our mailing list to jump on um, because we have our initiatives with our center and we do have congregational care um, as one of those things to hit over time. Yep. We've got a long time to, to do a whole lot of vision. We got, we've got a lot of way to go. Um, but there are other continuing education opportunities that are available that are hitting the emotional um, and mental health targets specifically for churches. And so if that's an area of interest, I would um, definitely um, ask you to pay attention to um, what our Center for Chaplaincy is doing and also the Continuing Education Department with IECCD because they also have some mental health workshops and things that are going to, um, that, that will be upcoming that definitely deal with trauma. Um, how do we lead as, as uh, uh, spiritual leaders, um, knowing the mental health climate that we're in, they have some very targeted um, opportunities available now. So I would encourage you to join our mailing list and you can do that at faithlearnthrive.org and you'll get all the information about those resources as well. And my last question, um, if there are churches that we would like to um, recommend to them to apply yep. for this particular uh, they just go to the website. Is that where they would apply? Yep. Go to Faith, Learn, Thrive. And uh, what's the exact title of the, the tab? Um, Learning Communities. Learning Communities. Yes. All right. Um, okay. It's under. Let me pull it up so you guys okay. can see it. Oh, we'll find it. We'll find it. I just need to, need to make sure we go to the website. Yep. It's on the website. All right. And like, like Dr. You, Williams said earlier, there. You can look at the application before you actually fill it out um, also. Yep. All right. Yeah, how we can help. Yep. Thank both of you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh. All right. Thank you, Dr. Chipman. There you go. Two buttons there. And the modules are there as well, so you can see those. Thank you so much. All right. What other questions? 
I think that addresses your question, Paula, about where to apply. So you've got that information. Thank you. Um, yeah, and any feedback you guys want to send about um, what we're offering, I know that it's not ideal for every church, but maybe your church needs um, a portion of this and you're most interested in a portion of this, let us know, give us that feedback. It'll help inform what we do in the future. So that'd be, that'd be helpful as well. Yeah. All right. Dr. Howe, you wanna wrap up? I do. So as I started off saying, we thank you for your time this evening. Um, we thank you for joining us. It's good to, to make your acquaintance um, as we uh, start on this journey. And it is our uh, invitation to each of you to apply, to join us on this journey. Um, like we said, go to the website. There's a lot of information there about the, the learning communities, about coaching, but there's also information about some of the other initiatives we have. For example, we've done some podcasts and they talk about things like and this is a question that many churches ask. Well, how do we engage younger people? There's a, a podcast about that where we brought in two young laity and two young clergy to have a conversation. And um, how about the idea of how do we go beyond online worship? How do we build stronger uh, uh, community uh, engagement? We have uh, this five videos out there. Uh, you can uh, just go to the, to the uh, website and you'll see those uh, videos. And then we have a what we call the Ministry Innovation Lab that's coming up that starts June. Uh, it will be, uh, it starts uh, June the 8th, I think it is off the top of my head. Yes. Sir. Um, but it's a lab where, let's say you have a particular initiative in your church or a particular ministry in your church that you've been doing for a while, but you want to reimagine it or you feel God calling you to, to do it differently or, or to reimagine how uh, this can be done. This ministry uh, innovation lab is for you. It's about helping you to think about how to launch new ministries, launch new programs. Uh, maybe you're thinking about nonprofits or you know some kind of uh, community event you know that builds engagement or a, a, a new faith-based business. We, we've partnered with uh, uh, a company to uh, that's called Ministry Incubators, and they, in our partnership, we created something completely unique to the. Uh, Faith Learn Thrive uh, uh, environment, and it, it gives you an opportunity to come together again in teams. Uh, this one is set up to be about three people per church uh, to come together and learn as again as a learning community. So yeah. it, it's on the website uh, starting on on the June eighth, the eight week learning experience. And this one is all virtual. It's eight weeks. It's all virtual. And the resources will be available online. So if you miss a session, you'll always have access to the content. So I've had a few questions around that. But yes, delivery is online for this. I want to make sure that um, I see you have several programs like he just went over and I don't want to apply for the wrong one. Mm -hmm. what, what is the, the tag again for... I know you went over what your um, tag was for this particular program we were talking about tonight. That will be learning communities. Learning communities. Learning communities. That's the uh, the, the ten week uh, psych, uh, workshops um, that starts with a retreat, ends with the annual conference, and monthly workshops. Yeah. And then the other area you want to explore is ministry labs. Ministry Labs is where you'll see the information about Innovation Lab. It's our first Ministry Lab, but we'll do a lot of focused, um, more focused trainings for churches. But this is our first one. And what I love most about this one is that they're going to actually teach you how to create multiple revenue streams for your church. Yes. We do some amazing things. And one of the hardest things to do is um, make it financially sustainable. So I love that about this particular training. It's gonna actually teach you how to do that. And I think that's probably like super valuable. So this is in the ministry lab segment. And then the program we talked about tonight, you'll find under learning community. Yep. So th there's a great question uh, in the chat uh, from Patricia, uh, Patricia's iPhone. It says, what if you are not a pastor 
of a church? Can you still take part? So, Patricia, can you say more about the context you're speaking about? You know, for example, the learning communities are designed to be teams of, of lay leaders and, and the pastor at a particular church. You know, as we said, you know, you might have five to seven folks in your church that participate in that learning community. In the okay, ministry, that's... go ahead, go ahead. Please. So I am um, assistant pastor at okay. uh, Amy Zion Church. Okay. Um, I do handle a few ministries. One is the Christian Education Department. Okay. But I am not the pastor. Okay. So I wanted to see what would my role be as far as coming into this program. What would my role be um, as far as my church go, being that I'm not the pastor. Okay, so again, this is not designed to be a pastor focus. It's a congregational focus. So let me put it in this context. So is there a group of five to seven folks at your church that has or can have a conversation with a pastor about you know, what we've shared tonight? Yes. And, and you come to a consensus that we as a congregation and we as the five to seven people uh, are interested in participating in this. That is correct. So if that's there, then here's how I would approach it. I would say, pray about it first, then have conversation with the pastor. And once you're all in consensus, then you talk about who's the team of people that would be committed to this journey and work with the rest of the congregation once you have that consensus, then you apply. Okay, thank you so much. All right. Great question. Thank you for asking that. Yep. And I, I would want to go. I would want to go back to that point. So, as you've received all of this information, you know, uh, Dr. Williams and I have shared a lot over this past hour. One of the things, as you go back and as as you consider the invitation that we're extending to you, don't forget to pray about this. Pray about where God is leading you and listen to God's voice. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we thank you so much for your time uh, and your participation. Thank you for the questions. In the meantime, as you pray, as you have conversations with the rest of your congregation, as you have conversations with your pastor, don't hesitate to send me a text, an email, or call us. Uh, we, we will respond to you right away. I think Dr. Williams is getting ready to put something up or put it in the chat. There's my number in the chat. All right. Um, I can share with you guys um, our, our uh, organizational contact information. Let's see. Let's yep. I'm putting mine in chat and it's 336. Oh yeah, don't even worry about that. I'm mean, gonna take that number out, I forgot, on this version. Okay. Um, our emails are vhow at hoodseminaries.edu or rwilliams at hoodseminary.edu. vhow or rwilliams at hoodseminary.edu. If you send me a message on social media, um, if you do it from our Faith Learn Thrive account, go over there, like us, please, like us, like us, like us. Um, <laughs> but if you direct message me on Facebook or Instagram, I'll get it and I'll hit you right back as well. Um, I'm watching that as well, so. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Pastor Colvin, I'll call you. Thank you. In the morning. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good to see you again. Have a good evening. Hey, Chris. hey good. how are you? Doing good. Thank you. Good. Good. <laughs> this was interesting. Thank you. Great, great. Mm -hmm. I like your background.
Oh. <laughs> I just come out of another Zoom meeting. That's what it was about. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Trying to. All right. I have one person that's still here. I'll let them go. All right. All right. All right. I thought it was a great session. Great session. Lots of good questions. Too. We're still recording. Hold a moment. Okay. <laughs> Stop recording.